Democrats are overplaying. That's the topic of today's bulletin. Your host, Cheryl Chung, in your Christian conservative look at today's news, politics, culture, and events. As I speak, the FBI has just completed a raid on Trump's, on Donald Trump's personal residence in Florida, Mar-a-Lago. Why? We don't really know yet. We don't know why the raid took place. We don't know how the FBI is planning to spin it. Oops, I mean, explain it, justify it, clarify it. And really, we don't even know who approved it yet. Merrick Garland, of course, as head of justice, has to have known about it. But we don't know who exactly were involved in approving this execution of a search warrant. What are agents looking for? Trump says they even cracked open a safe. Trump, by the way, wasn't even at his home when the FBI raided his home. He was in New York. And the FBI, of course, said that it was just, it was a smoothly conducted execution of a search warrant, hardly a raid, and hardly anything that was untoward. Really? Are Americans that stupid? Before I get into that, I want to quickly mention that if you like Bold and Blunt, you can check out Bold and Blunt at edify.app. That is the online platform for faith-based podcasts. And I'm happy to say that Bold and Blunt is among its lineup of esteemed podcasters. You can also get Bold and Blunt anywhere podcasts are offered and at WashingtonTimes.com, of course. These are dark times for our nation wrote Donald Trump, 45th president of the United States of America. Yes, this is still America. The FBI may want to crack open a copy of the Constitution because they seem to have forgotten that in America we don't do these communist dictator-type executions of search warrants, as they put it, at night on former presidents of the United States, former presidents of the United States who, it's interesting to note, may in fact be running for a second term against the sitting president of the United States. Isn't that curious? These are dark times for our nation, Trump wrote, as my beautiful home, Mar-a-Lago in Palm Beach, Florida, is currently under siege raided and occupied by a large group of FBI agents. Nothing like this has ever happened to a president of the United States before. And let me sidestep for a second. Nothing like anything Donald Trump experienced while president of the United States has ever happened to a president of the United States before. I mean, think about it. Democrats were so terrified of Donald Trump being in the White House that they were calling for his impeachment before he even was inaugurated. And then shortly after he was inaugurated, they started calling for his impeachment before he even had time to do anything in the White House. And then, of course, impeachment marked every move he made in the White House from the mouths of the Democrats from before day one, until even after he was out of the White House, after his term ended, Democrats still went forward with calls of impeachment. And we're still going through these January 6 mock hearings on Capitol Hill that just defy logic. If the Democrats really think that they are winning the hearts and minds of independents and various blocks of voters in America that don't traditionally vote Republican or Democrat, but just each election consider the candidate on the candidate's own standing and and platforms. If they think they are winning the hearts and minds of these voters, they ought to think again. You know, because there are a lot of voters that the Democrats have courted over the years, uh, specifically the Hispanic vote in large part by opening borders and expecting that these uh, illegals who flood into the United States would be so grateful to the Democrats that in turn, once they were legalized, once they were given the tools to vote, that they would naturally vote Democrat. But guess what? 
a lot of these Hispanics are fleeing the Democrat Party because the Democrat Party is overreaching. The Democrat Party is doing things like sicking the FBI on a former president of the United States, weaponizing the FBI, weaponizing the federal authorities, federal law enforcement authorities against a former president of the United States for political reasons. If, there were, if this wasn't for political reasons, then this same FBI would have gone after Hillary Clinton for whitewashing the files on her own laptop. Or, in more modern days, this same FBI would be looking into Joe Biden's ties with China due to his own son, Hunter. Hunter Biden's laptop. It's still floating out there, just waiting for investigation by this very same FBI, this very same Justice Department. No, it's Trump who is the threat. And look, American citizens are getting sick and tired of this. Truly, within hours of the FBI setting up camp outside of Trump's home, scores of pro-Trump protesters, pro-America defenders, traveled some hours to show support to show support for Donald Trump, to show support for the Constitution, to show support for the notion of law and order and right and morally proper. Here is what one Trump supporter said, interviewed by Guardian News. The uh, Biden administration, the Democrats, are weaponizing the FBI and it has to stop it. The FBI is not here to weaponize against another president. It never has happened before. Such an assault. Such an assault could only take place in broken third world countries. The text on this video shows. Sadly, America has now become one of those countries. That text is taken from a statement from Donald Trump. They even broke into my safe. What is the difference between this and Watergate where operatives broke into the Democrat National Committee? Committee. Here in reverse, Democrats broke into the home of the 45th president of the United States. He's got a point, right? Donald Trump has a significant point to make here. Why is the FBI weaponized against this president? Why does the deep state so hate this former president? I'll tell you why. Because he's a huge threat to the Davos crowd, to the globalists at the World Economic Forum and World Health Organization. He's a huge threat to the UN pinheads who see America as the last stumbling block to bring about their global vision for world dominance, the one world order, the new world order, the build back better, as Joe Biden calls it, the great reset, as Klaus Schwab with the World Economic Forum calls it. These are not conspiracy theories. These are stated factual designs and strategies put forth on these globalist pinheads' own websites. Go to weforum.org and check out Klaus Schwab's vision that he writes about called the Great Reset. The political persecution of President Donald J. Trump, Trump continues in his statement, has been going on for years with the now fully debunked Russia, Russia, Russia scam impeachment hoax number one, impeachment hoax number two, and so much more. It just never ends. It is a political targeting of the highest level. I agree. Do you? I stood up to America's bureaucratic corruption. I restored power to the people and truly delivered for our country like we have never seen before. The establishment hated it. Yes, they did. The establishment within America's own political system, including many in the Republican Party, the same Republican Party that were supposed to be in office to represent the Constitution and support Donald Trump as he fought these deep state, far left influences. But more than the establishment, more than the establishment hating Donald Trump, the establishment plus 
their partners in global governments hated Donald Trump because he was a threat to all that they envision for their global dominance of the world citizens. That's not hyperbole. That is their vision in a nutshell that they themselves talk about openly, write about openly, discuss, plot, and strategize openly. If you're not paying attention to these meetings that take place on the world stage at the United Nations, at Davos, at the World Economic Forum, if you're not reading the World Health Organization's websites and also checking out America's federal bureaucracy's own websites like the CDC, Centers for Disease and Control, the FDA, and see how they're all working together in partnership to bring down America, to crumble America, so as to bring about the global vision, the Great Reset, you are missing what's taking place, not even behind the scenes anymore, openly, openly. You are missing how these plotters are plotting against America. And guess who didn't miss it? Donald Trump. And that's a big reason why the FBI was at Donald Trump's home, because they're so worried that he may, in fact, do what it seems, what all signs seem to show he may be doing, and that's running for a second White House term in 2024. And guess what? He would probably win. Look, Americans around the nation, whether you like Donald Trump or not, whether you supported Donald Trump or not, whether you vote Republican or with conservative principles or not, step back from politics and think about what is taking place right now. A former president of the United States, his personal residence, was raided by the sitting president's Department of Justice by the sitting president's FBI, the same sitting president who may in fact face this former president for another political run. Is that America to you? Or does that sound like a third world banana republic, dictatorial nation? Does that sound like something North Korea would do or Cuba or communist China, or does that sound like land of the free America? Come on, you don't have to be a conservative to see the wrong that's being done here. And that's why I'm thankful for my guest today, who has taken a look at what's going on in our nation, and Instead of just railing against the TV or throwing down the newspaper in frustration or gathering with friends to vent, has actually put that frustration and that worry and concern for the fate of our nation and channeled it into a campaign called Lady Up America. She's going for the hearts and minds of the moms in America right now to get active, get engaged, and collaborate to fight against these far leftist influences that are infiltrating rapidly America's political and societal structures and taking down America from within. If you care about your kids, if you're a mom in America and you care about the, the future that you are leaving your kids, you may want to think about supporting this organization, Lady Up America. The woman's name is Diane Canada, and I'm happy to say she is here on Bold and Blunt. Diane, thank you so much for being on Bold and Blunt. I really appreciate your time. Really appreciate you having me this morning, Cheryl. Thank you. So your organization, Lady Up America, I love that title, by the way, is, as we speak, about to launch an 18-city tour across America. Tell yes. listeners what you're doing here. This is a, I look at this very much like a missions trip, if you will. Um, I am going into the key battleground counties in the southeast across both Carolinas, Florida, and Georgia. And I'm going to be working alongside GOPs in those areas to 
strengthen the everyday moms uh, who are really struggling in the toughest political climate of our lifetime. And the point is to equip these moms to become very serious influencers as we approach the midterms and then subsequently the presidential election as well. We know that a lot of people are running away from Democrat policies right now. That doesn't mean they're running to conservative values. So I look at this as a strike while the iron's hot moment, where we have the opportunity where people are, are they're listening and they're, they're vulnerable to change. If we can equip these moms to have very powerful discussions and actually win them to conservative values, then I think it'll impact both of these elections coming up. So, so who who are you and um, your your background that led you to? Did you form this campaign, Lady Up America? Um, tell me a little bit about your background. Sure, seems like I've been training for this all my life. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, Lady Up America was sort of my brainchild, but it evolved very organically. Um, early in my career, I was in battleground situations in business. So as a consultant, I would go into crisis situations in businesses where they were just going down by the head, and my job was to go in and and right that ship again, bring it back up, save it from sinking. Um, So that was uh, how I spent the first 15 years or so of my career, was um, pumping life back into organizations that were really flailing. And then um, I also simultaneously had a professional songwriting career, so a lot of my music has been you know, played and and is on television, that kind of thing. But the the reason I bring it up is because in the professional songwriting world, you have to learn how to craft a message that's very impactful and in a very tight space. And so that was really key training for what I'm doing now. Um, And that can also win people, win their buy-in and win their interest. And then the, the next part of my career, I started shifting toward working with women, specifically more on the proactive side. So trying to prevent a lot of the crisis situations and teaching them how to um, go into um, hostile environments, maybe, or that kind of thing, and and try to win people and prevent situations like that. Um, Ultimately, we had a a pretty serious loss in my family uh, that propelled me to run for State House of Representatives. I lost my my brother, who was a special ops Marine in Afghanistan. Um, We lost him to PTSD. Um, it'll be, we're coming up on our seventh Christmas now. And um, a couple of years, obviously, that was devastating for our family. And uh, he left behind a, a son who's nine years old now. And um, a couple of years into that healing process, God started tugging on my heart for public service. And I was, I had never had any experience in politics before. Uh, but once I obeyed that call and, and, accepted that call on my life, then I just went all in and I learned as much as I possibly can. When you run for office, you, I mean, not everybody maybe, but for me, I took a deep dive into what I believe, why I believe it. And that consulting hat, I couldn't keep from wearing that a lot of times, seeing how the conservatives are really missing it. You know, that was a lot of what I had to do in the consulting world was try to figure out where are the gaps and where, what's really going on underneath all the emotion. And so it was, it was key for me to be able to see that on the campaign trail, like where are we missing it? And so that, that experience was incredibly pivotal for what I'm doing now. Um, when the election season ended and we ended up with a Biden presidency, uh, my phone just started blowing up from moms that I knew so concerned about the trajectory of our country and in a panic, and they would have me come to their house, and they would gather their neighbors around in living rooms, and they'd say, what do we do? What do we do? Just tell us what to do. They're certainly not woke, but they're awake. They're scared for their children, and they have all of this angst and all of this anxiety, all of this fear and anger, and they don't know what to do with it. What, what specifically um, did, they, did, did they express anxiety over? Was it the transgender movement? Was it the, the books they were seeing their kids uh, exposed to in school libraries? Can you give an example or two? Sure. Um, I, think, I think a lot of their fear initially was the socialist trajectory. Okay. Um, you know, COVID, obviously COVID was, was bringing out a lot of these things, and this was still fairly new at the end of, you know, once Biden took presidency. Um, we were just still dealing with all of that. But yes, CRT, all of that had been revealed, um, you know, when children were being 
you know, were learning at home, moms became extremely concerned about the Marxist agenda on our country. So it, it encompasses all of those things. And we know that the ultimate, you know, the ultimate goal is to transition us from a free nation into socialism. Right. And so, yes, all of that being revealed. So the CRT, the gender issues, um, certainly uh, their fear over losing control. Like when we started seeing a lot of these school board meetings happening and the parents were just being silenced and shut down, they realized how little voice they had in these school systems. Um, there's just been a lot, a lot of things revealed. And so the, the thing that got me off the off the couch really to, to really kick this movement into high gear was when we saw the debacle in Afghanistan, when, when Biden left behind right. our military, when we lost some of our military there. And then he checked his that watch was, as the bodies were being yeah. taken off the uh, airplane. Yeah, disgusting. Yeah. That was the final straw for me, Cheryl. That after what my brother went through and endured yep. in Afghanistan, that was it. That was the final straw for me. And I said, that's it. I'm, I'm doing something. So I went into a lot of prayer, and, um, and this evolved. So what I'm seeing is that there's no cavalry coming out of Washington, you know, and it is up to us. And the moms are so qualified to do this work because they are, first of all, the most motivated. <laughs> you don't have to worry about getting out the vote with moms right, <laughs> right now. And uh, they are highly qualified because of their emotional intelligence level and we are in an emotionally driven society right now so if we can mobilize them and channel that anger and that fear they have in a productive way i am 100 percent convinced that they can write our country they can they can they can win people to our values go 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 back to what you said about you went into prayer you, you spent time in prayer and then this campaign evolved so wh what does that mean specifically? Because I think there are a lot of people out there, perhaps even listening, right, to this show, who would like to launch a similar endeavor as yours, or they would like to get involved, but it's the step-by-step -step that they're not sure of. So after prayer and before the, the evolving, wh what do you do? You pick up a phone and call your GOP contact, and how, how did that specifically evolve? You know... One thing I've learned in my in my life is that no no one's journey is the same. I, I would be hesitant to give someone a blueprint. I can tell them certainly how mine evolved, but what I would encourage people to do more is to is to listen for their own whisper of wisdom that comes from God. True. And you know, so so things evolved for me in a way where um, the ne it's like the next breadcrumb. Just kind of, that's all we have to focus on right now is what's the next breadcrumb? What's the next thing that God's leading you to do? And, and whatever that is, trust your gut and follow that. Don't analyze it too much. Just follow it. So for me, I start, it started out with a, with a podcast. I started uh, you know, doing a live podcast every day of the week, like on the weekdays. And that started helping me develop my ideas and my thoughts a little bit more clearly. And then that led to doing an event. I held an all-day event here in Nashville to kind of test out my, my ideas. And then that led to me contacting one of my dear friends here who's a strong philanthropist and strong champion for freedom, Dr. Ming Wang. Um, he escaped communist China just after the Cultural Revolution mm. and um, mm. the epitome of the American dream. Right. Uh, but he and I, uh, I, I went to him with some ideas, and he came alongside of me immediately, and we started developing what we called the Reunite America Academy. And that was a series of six classes where we just, again, took a deeper dive into these ideas. And then that evolved into developing an app. And then that evolved into this tour. And so wow. I did reach out to a lot of the GOPs. I've had a lot of speaking opportunities with GOP, especially Republican women's groups. Um, so that was all kind of happening simultaneously while we were developing this. So it, it naturally evolved into working alongside GOPs and now with the specific purpose of, of getting out the vote and winning people to conservative values, not just benefiting from people running 
from bad Democrat values. That, that, that's, <laughs> or bad Democrat policies, I should say. That's fascinating. That's fascinating, that, that, that's fascinating <laughs> how, how it developed. I appreciate you going through the steps because I, I think, you know, a lot of people see what you do and they think, well, I could never do that. And I think that's the problem in America. There are so many people, their hearts are in the right place, but they don't understand how to utilize their skills. And as you rightly pointed out, starting with prayer and listening to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. And I think that's key. And you you, you nailed it. So looking ahead, uh, 18 cities, where are you headed? And, and what do you expect and what do you want to have happen? Mm-hmm. Each city is going to, again, kind of like the journey we were just talking about, each city is going to require a different you know, kind of a different formula. <laughs> but what I what I hope to have happen in the early cities, I'll be going to Charlotte today. I'm headed there. My tour kicks off at the Charlotte Motor Speedway um, tomorrow evening. So I'll be working with a great group of, of people there, um, a great lady named Holly Grimsley, who has been a 12-year school board chairman. Um, she's bringing out a lot of the candidates that are running for school board and a lot of the legislators that are championing the parents' bill of rights legislation in their in their town. So, like in these first few cities in in North Carolina and in Charleston, South Carolina, uh, they actually have nine school board seats up for grabs right now. And the Moms for Liberty group there has done an excellent job of preparing eight out of those nine seats. Um, with Republican women who can take them. Wow. <laughs> um, so my my early goals will be to help really champion these school board seats, make sure that, that people, that the moms in these areas are aware of who, of who their candidates are and that they know how to talk in their sphere of influence. You know, moms, we're not trying to get moms to go out and talk to total strangers. We have opportunities to influence with the people that we encounter every day. That's how we do it best. And so I just want to make sure they've got the tools to really win people, um, to not only get out and vote for these great candidates, but also make sure that we're winning dependable conservative votes for the, for the future elections. Um, when we start getting down into the Florida, I'm going to be going up and down both east and west coast of Florida and then coming back up through Georgia on my way back to Tennessee. So we'll be real near the, pri- or real near the presidential, or I'm sorry, real near the midterm election at that point. And um, so it's going to be a a strong effort on making sure that moms feel really comfortable making, you know, talking to people in their sphere of influence and getting them out to vote conservative. So that's the, that's the short answer. Um, These techniques that I bring, they're very simple. They're very um, simple to share. They're not easy, but they're very simple. They can be taught very quickly. And it's opportunities for women to practice and get really sharp at them. And then they can get out and and do them in their community and make impact. So we only have about one minute left, but I'm just curious, what's the biggest struggle that you've encountered so far about energizing women to vote and to vote against socialism? Mm -hmm. I don't know that it's so much an energized issue. They're energized. They just don't know how. They don't know how to... um, they don't know what to do. Uh, so, I, you know, we talk about the silent majority. We talk about, uh, you know, what I see is women are either opting out of these conversations or they're attempting them only for them to erupt into a fight. So this technique I'm teaching is the third option, how to master these these conversations. So I think that they will get out and vote. Um, it's just a matter of who do they vote for and how do they get other people around them to vote. The election integrity is obviously on people's minds, very heavy. They wonder if their vote matters. So that's another barrier, you know, to the, to the voting process this year. We saw a very low turnout in Tennessee for our primaries. And so we've got to just restore that trust, teach them that a lot of these laws have been changed. So their vote, you know, the election integrity is restored in so many areas and, um, and just encourage them to feel confident um, in having conversations that convert to conservative values. And um, uh, just one last question. I know we're going a little bit over right now, but have you have you reached out to media along the route, or how do you plan to uh, maintain updates? Is it just on your own social media, or are you partnering with some local media? Um, have you alerted them to your presence in the area? Mm-hmm. We have. So a lot of the stops that I'm going to be making on the tour, already we already have um, newspapers and organizations there that plan to cover the tour. 
Um, but I'm going to be giving people updates. I'm going to be doing a daily diary inside the Lady Up America app. And it's a free app that people can download. So I'll be doing a daily diary there. And then I'm also going to be doing in-app virtual, what I call ice cream socials with moms, um, where I'm going to be coming in and encouraging them from the road, telling them what we're seeing on the road, what we're learning, and then keeping them fired up around the country. We have some cottage workshops going on around the country. People are starting to rise up and, and hold those in their homes. And so this is all brand new. Uh, but as it grows, my vision would be for these cottage groups to be popping up all over the country and for we have to have enough media attention on this where moms that I can't reach on this initial tour will still learn about it and can benefit from the techniques in their town. Wow, what a force. What a force you are. Diane Canada, Lady Up America. Stay in touch and best of luck on this campaign. Uh, keep in touch with me personally. Thank you, Cheryl. I, I sure will. And I know I'm kind of an army of one at the moment, but I have full uh, full faith in God that this is really his mission and it'll spread. If God wants it out there, it'll spread. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so, I, thank you for taking this uh, topic and bringing some attention to it. I sure appreciate it. Thanks for being on Bold and Blunt. Fight the coming socialism. Fight the coming communism, for crying out loud. I hope moms everywhere get involved and take up arms like this woman Diane Canada is trying to do with Lady Up America. But more than that, I hope Americans across the entire nation, both genders, both sexes, and yes, there are only two, get out and start fighting as hard as if their lives depended on it, as if their liberties depended upon it, which it does. Started fighting these far leftist, deep state influences, the types that have grown so bold they think nothing of raiding a former president's personal home. That is when we know America is in its 12th hour. If you like Bold and Blunt, check out Bold and Blunt at edify.app. Check out Bold and Blunt anywhere podcasts are offered. And check out Bold and Blunt, of course, at WashingtonTimes.com. And if you want to learn a little bit more about how the socialists are infiltrating America, check out my latest book. It is called Locked Down, The Socialist Plan to Take Away Your Freedom. It's based on the two plus years of the coronavirus that the Democrats, the leftists, the globalists weaponized to turn against American citizens, against citizens of the world, but most significantly against American citizens to strip us of our individual liberties. And guess what? They have no plans of letting go. The fear that they so successfully exploited to steal and seize our individual God-given liberties. Thank you for listening. Tune in next time. And in the meanwhile, stay blunt. Thank you.